and it's so sweet and I think that's a lot of the reason why we do what we do too is because the system took that opportunity away from us so oh girl come on you're doing your makeup hold on let's stop talking for a second somebody talk about sunshine and roses hi my loves it's Ro welcome back to my channel today we are going to talk about a couple of prison things that I saw that happened on episode three I have orange hands because I did self tanner last night and was too lazy to take out the glove. But that's not what this video is about. We're gonna talk about a couple of things that stood out to me in episode three of For Life on ABC. And we're also going to be doing a get ready with me while we do it because real talk, there are not enough hours in the day to work a full-time job, do YouTube, go to the gym, have a prison husband, the list is endless. So we're gonna do a two for one special today. If you're interested in these few prison things that are so real life that I have stories related to them with Adam, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of a nonprofit organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll put a picture of it and then also a link that is separate. The link will be in the card. The picture is not a link. I know some people are getting kind of confused. I'll put that up there. I've been using my years of experience since 2009 to coach prison wives and family members. There is nothing nothing fun about this journey. There is nothing to glorify or glamorize about prison, prison wife life, prison life, inside life. Frankly, the whole entire thing just sucks. But if you're stuck here, I will teach you how to make the best out of this really depressing, hopefully one shot deal. If you like what you see and want to see more of this pretty little face, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you are notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay, so we're gonna talk about for life. We're gonna do my makeup at the same time. I prepped my skin, I showered, I washed it, and then I just prepped it with, I told you guys in my peel video, there's not really much I do for my face. So I sprayed it down with rose water, and then I moisturized with this vitamin E, Jason brand. You guys ask me all the time which vitamin E I use. I use that, but I also took the Alba brand vitamin C. This is E and C mixed. That's all I really use on my face, you guys. Okay, so I'll tell you the products that I use while I talk about for life. We're gonna start with foundation. I am one of those mixed foundation girls, so right now I'm stuck on three. My top favorite of all time is, it's Too Faced Born This Way. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of Studio Skin by Smashbox. I also really like Bare Minerals. You could wear any of these alone. When I film, I like to mix because some of them have HD. Some of them are better coverage than others. To be honest, this one's great, but I can't wear it alone because it's too light. I got the wrong color. So this episode starts off, they're starting off where the guys are in a meeting room, kind of like a drug rehab type of meeting, the like group, which is common. There's a program in federal prison called RDAP, R-D-A-P. I don't know what those letters stand for, but it can get you a year off your sentence if you qualify. And the, the judge usually has to write it into your sentence, but if you have drug or alcohol related charges, you can qualify for RDAP. And if you complete the program, then you can get a year off of your sentence. Problem being, it is so strict in RDAP. You know what, as I talk, I always get ideas for videos and I think I will look for somebody who has had a loved one go through the RDAP program and have them on the channel because it's crazy. They monitor your emails, they monitor your calls, they monitor everything a lot more closely and they don't let you get away with anything in there because I think they're probably looking for excuses to kick you out, but there's workbooks and all kinds of stuff you have to complete to get through this program. I think it's a year. I think the program's a year and you get a year off your sentence, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. So that's totally something legit that the episode started out. But then one of the guys in there says, oh shoot, I forgot this. The guy did not say, oh shoot, I forgot this. But I use this orange concealer. It's just a dollar from Walgreens. It's the, what brand is this? LA Girl brand, you can find it at the dollar store. I use the orange to conceal the blue lines underneath my eyes, but I forgot to use it under my foundation. So we're gonna do, do it like that. So during this little art app, or it's not art app because they're not in federal prison, but whatever New York calls it, one of the guys says, that he 
is afraid to get out because he's afraid that being on the street, he's gonna use again. There's going to be too much temptation. Can you take me seriously with this all over my face? <laughs> I'm going to spray this NYX Dewy Finish. I use this as a setting spray, but I also use it to wet my beauty blenders. I honestly don't know what brand this is, but I got it from online. It's one of my favorites. I can link it below. I use it to wet it and then to bounce, pounce, whatever in my foundation and my concealer. Just so you guys know, I should probably add a disclaimer. I am nowhere near a makeup artist. I just like to watch a lot of YouTube makeup videos and follow what they do, so. Just to let you know, this is not a makeup tutorial. This is me just saving time, doing a video, and a get ready with me at the same time. So the guy says that he's really scared to get out because he is used to being inside of prison. He's used to the structure. He's used to the lifestyle in there, just how it runs. And that is absolutely 100% hands down the God's honest truth because we hear all the time that people violate when I say violate, I mean violate their parole and probation to go back inside because they don't understand how to live on the outside in the free world. It's a very different society inside of prison and it's so sad because this is out here, the free world is normal life, but they don't understand a lot of times, a lot of times, they don't understand how to operate outside of prison culture and the prison society because they're just so institutionalized and the PTSD has taken such a strong hold on them and their brains that it's hard for them to function out here with all of the freedom, with having to make decisions, without that structure of being in prison. So that was totally true and it stood out to me. And I should probably say there weren't too, too many things that stood out to me in this episode. A lot of this episode I think was definitely fabricated. I know it's loosely based off of a true story and we're gonna get to a comment, the comment of the day that I'm going to read where I read you guys a comment off of last week's For Life video, it was episode two, that talks about that and I wanna kind of give you guys a rebuttal to that. The next thing we're using is Tarte Shape Tape as my concealer. And the next thing that stood out to me in For Life episode three was that there was a cop that came in in uniform to visit Aaron Wallace, the lawyer, the jailhouse lawyer, who's also a lawyer on the outside in this show. And he came in in uniform. He was one of the other inmates brothers. Do I think that that's real? I have never in my life seen that in all of the prison visits I've gone to. I lost it. Oh, I sprayed my sponge, my dirty, now dirty sponge. I just washed them with, and we're lucky because usually these get ratchet. I let them get ratchet. I sprayed it with that NYX sometimes. I even spray it with the rose water. You just need it damp. I like the NYX when I'm filming and stuff and I'm gonna have makeup on all day because it's supposed to help set it and keep it on for longer. Okay, so the next thing that happened was the cop in uniform and I honestly don't think that that's true. I think even people who have police officers as family members, I don't think the cop's gonna show up to prison in their uniform because I think in the higher levels of security, the guys will go back and they might have to deal with people who are calling them rats, cop lovers, this and that. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's that would be my guess based off of what I know. And can a cop go to visit their family member? Of course. Would they go in uniform? I would say probably not. And I don't know that they would even be allowed, I guess, but like, then it's like there's a cop in his uniform and then there's the COs in their different uniforms and that can get kind of messy and power struggle and all that stuff, I could be wrong. Maybe cops go visit their family members like in county jail all the time, but I've never seen it. Okay, the next thing I'm using is this Wet n Wild contour palette. I use the light side for under my eyes and I use the darker side as bronzer to contour. Oh, and I use my Sigma. I have no idea what number this is. I think that says F84. I have no idea though because it's so old it wore off, but that's what I use my to do the contour. So the next one is one of the guys on the inside, I'm assuming it's Aaron. I don't know, I didn't take notes very well, but it said, one of the inmates said, I'm just trying to do the right thing and Lord knows, let me just read it to you. I'm just trying to do what's right and Lord knows that's a hard thing. Yes, hands down, absolutely. And I'll take it one step further. A lot of times people like Adam will, I know, I'm, I'm weird setting my makeup. A lot of times people like Adam will have to watch their back more with the cops when they're just trying to do the right thing because it kind of shines a glaring light on 
the cops that just want to be lazy, that don't want to do any work. So now here's this guy, this lifer coming along, doing all of these great things, trying to help people, trying to rehabilitate them, trying to make all of these changes. And it's basically shining this big flashlight on the fact that the cops that are getting paid to do all that stuff aren't. Then your character and your intentions start getting questioned. So it's a pain in the butt. It's hard to do the right thing in jail. You're going against the grain of all of your fellow inmates. You're going against the grain of all of your fellow cops. That's why a lot of people that get out, stay out and do well are just the ones that put their head down, go to the law library, don't really get involved in a lot, just kind of, Adam calls it, carving out their space and doing their time their own little way. So I totally hear that. And you're going to, especially when you're doing legal work inside, you're gonna be faced with so many different challenges. It seems like everyone's trying to just roadblock you every chance that they get. So real true. And if your loved one is experiencing this, just try to encourage them through it. And it's still, even though it's hard, it is still the best thing possible for them to stay on the right path. Okay. Now I'm just doing the dark contour part and it's a Sigma 102 brush. I got this in like a Ipsy or yeah, I think I got this in an Ipsy bag when I used to get that. So the next part that stood out to me, Marie was at work and she works as a chemo nurse. We just find out in this episode. And one of her, I think it was a doctor. Yeah, because I think the lady was wearing a white coat. She says to her, she comes up to her and she said, oh, I heard Aaron won a case. And Marie's like, yeah, I was there. And you could tell this lady's her friend and she's kind of taken back because I guess Marie doesn't tell her that she goes to see him or whatever. And the doctor says, you know, you have a really good man right now, meaning Darius, Aaron's best friend on the street, who wound up hooking up with Aaron's wife when they got separated because he was in jail for life. So she's like, you kind of have the best thing that ever happened to you. Don't screw it up. And Marie's like, I'm not. And so the friend basically says, don't get rewrapped up in your feelings with Aaron. And I 100% hands down felt that with my whole entire heart and soul because there are people who genuinely think that they mean well and they get involved and especially your friends. Sometimes they get involved because genuinely they are concerned for you and unfortunately they think they know what's best for you based off of their own stigma, based off of their own biases in their own life, things that have happened to them in the past, things that they have heard. And let's be frank, prison relationships are not conventional. Prison relationships are not going to be looked upon in any way other than what is she doing? He's in there for life. I get it. Hey, I live that every single day. But as I tell you guys all the time, you just have to stay strong and you just have to tell people, I understand what you're saying. I got it. This is my life. I'm going to make adult decisions based off of my life. Although you mean well for me and I love you for it. And I know you're saying this out of love. We need to agree to disagree on this one. You're not going to tell me anything that I haven't spoken about, thought about, mold over 100,000 times more than you have. It's my life. So thank you. I appreciate it, but I got it. We're going to use my favorite brush, brush? No, my favorite blush right now. It's NYX Ombre Blush and Strictly Chic and it is really cool. It's an ombre looking and this is my favorite color for my complexion. It's like a peach. Okay, so the next scene is Aaron's in the courtroom and he goes to the back while the judge is kind of deliberating. And before I keep going, we're using the Real Techniques brush. Blush? Brush? The judge is deliberating and Aaron goes to the back of the courtroom and he asks the cop, the same cop that was there visiting him, he was going to be a witness in this case for his brother. And so while they're all deliberating, while the judge is deliberating and they're all kind of waiting, Aaron goes into the back to have a conversation with the cop. And he says, listen, man, he's like, I, I know that we're kind of on the same team. So the cop was inducted into this 100 blacks club, I guess the top 100 black police officers. What Aaron was trying to do was connect on a level kind of, and so, the cop gets taken back and he was like, what does that have to do with me? Like, what are you talking about? Because what Aaron is wanting is for the cop to go get his police record, his file for him to at least look through it because his file was tampered with. And so the cop's like, are you kidding me? And he was like, you're asking me to risk my job for this? And Aaron's like, come on, man. Like, you know that they screwed me over. And then the cop says to Aaron, what does that have to do with me? You should have thought about that before an Aaron cuts him off and says, before what? Before I decided to be black in America? Oh, 
true. We all know that the prison system is biased. We all know that we are living in a new Jim Crow era, which is just basically modern day slavery. If you are into that kind of stuff, you want to learn more, there's literally a book called The New Jim Crow. I absolutely recommend reading it. I have not. Adam has for an inside out class. Your makeup looks so different on camera than it does in real life. Although I just gave myself a mask. Come on. We're going to do brows next. I just got my brows done, threaded for the first time in a, like two years yesterday. So I'm really excited about that. I was just trying to grow them out because my brows are weird. For today, we're going to use the Anastasia, Anastasia. Is it Anastasia? If you're fancy, I don't know. Brow definer and I use medium brown. The next thing that happens is the DA's office comes and they find Marie because they're all speculating that Aaron Wallace had the note that the little girl left when she tried to take her own life from the case last week that he won. They're all speculating that he had that note forged. It's true, he did. But the DA's office goes and they barge into Marie's job. And while she's in the middle of giving a patient chemo, and they're like, you need to come with us. So she gets really embarrassed. And one of the girls that she works with was like, don't worry, I got this. I'll finish this for you. Are you okay? Are you okay? And she was strong as nails. And she said, yeah, I'm fine. And the DA takes her, the, the whole crew, takes her back to the DA's office and they are pressing her. And they're trying to get her to speak and they are intimidating her and they're scaring her. They're like, are you aware of X, Y, and Z? And they're kind of making stuff up like, we have this, this, and this on file and all this stuff. And she was strong as nails again. And she was smart. She wasn't giving them anything. She was denying and just moving on with her life. And then later Aaron calls her because she didn't know what happened. And she told him like, they're on you, blah, blah, blah about this note. And he apologizes profusely. So there's two lessons in this. First of all, the DA coming after you or the FBI coming after you, my God, that is painfully true. Adam's family was threatened. They were told that he was involved in all different kinds of homicides, not even close to true. They were told all of this crazy stuff about like trafficking and you don't know your son and blah, blah, blah. And his family lived halfway across the country. So they didn't really know he, what he was involved in. I mean, they knew that he was a troubled kid. They knew that he had gotten out of state prison a couple of years before that, but they didn't know what his dealings were. They didn't know who he, was, who he was with. They didn't know what he was involved in. But when they say we have all this evidence and we're going to implicate you, and if you continue to talk to him, then you're going to be indicted with X, Y, and Z charges, blah, blah, blah. So a couple of very, very extremely close family members did not speak to him for years. They did that for intimidation tactics. They did that, number one, to have his family turn on him. Number two, to make him feel so alone and isolated and scared that he would turn over on them and he would cooperate. So sad, but so true. And they do that. They, they use all of these intimidation factors with family members, and that's what Marie was experiencing here. Number two lesson here is that a lot of times inmates on the inside will use family members on the outside to fulfill a personal agenda, something that can make them money, something that can make them help win a case, anything like that. In this instance, Marie was pulled into Aaron's scam on the inside, even though it was to help his case, it still was 100% illegal and she could have gotten charged for this. So the next time Marie goes to visit him, she tells him, I will help you with anything that you want me to help you with as long as it's legal. Let me interrupt myself and tell you that I, this is the Anastasia powder contour kit. I don't like it as contour on my face, but you could see I use the lighter colors as eyeshadow. I actually use all of it as eyeshadow. So that's what I was using just to prime my eyes for eyeshadow. I'm just going to use the L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner in... This one says brown, but it looks black to me. I always use black. Huh? I didn't even know I had brown. So a lot of times inmates inside of prison are going to ask their family members to get involved in things that are illegal. Number one, first and foremost, bringing in contraband, bringing in cigarettes, bringing in illegal substances, bringing in cell phone. Well, I don't think you can bring in cell phones, but paying for cell phone plans, etc. And so I would just suggest being very careful and putting your foot down and saying no and telling them that you do not appreciate 
I should do this off camera, that's gross. But tell them that you do not appreciate being put in the middle of their prison politics because you guys, if you get caught doing that, if you get caught doing handoffs in prison visit, you will leave in handcuffs in a cop car. If you have children with you, they will go to child protective services and you will be faced with criminal charges yourself. So what are we gonna use today? I think I might use the Tati palette. I'm obsessed with this palette. I, this is a whole next level. I think I'm just gonna do a natural kind of barely there look today because I have errands to run after this. I'm gonna go in with the Soothe Matte for, um, what do you call this? This part right here? Like the transition part? See, I'm not a makeup artist, but just so you know what I'm doing. So while they were in court, there's another inmate waiting to go on trial too, because you know, they see a few people at the same time. And the inmate says to the cop brother, he's the brother of another inmate that's on trial right now. The inmate that's talking is the guy that's waiting to go up next for a different trial. I hope I'm making sense. And so the inmate that's waiting says to the cop, who's the brother of the inmate. Why am I making this so confusing? He says, I just want you to know that your brother has done so much for me. He's saved my life. So we're going to, what are we gonna use? Let's use ritual. We'll use Ritual Matte on the Outer Vape. That is 100% the God's honest truth, is that people stop me all the time. When you are involved with an inmate who, I, if you, first of all, if you guys are makeup artists, you're probably cringing right now. I told you, I am I'm so not, I'm so not. So I'm probably not even doing this right. So when you're involved with an inmate that is a good guy, usually they try to help other inmates get back on the right path they try to help them do good. Even lifers, a lot of lifers do that. They try to, at least the way Adam explains it to me, is he's trying to tip the scales of justice, he says, where he's just trying to make up for the mistakes of his past. He's trying to help people. Because like I always say to you guys about strong prison wives and families, if I can use my experiences to help one of you avoid the pain and the hardships that I've been through, if I can use my experiences to help you not have to suffer and hurt the way that I do, and your guy can get out and stay out, then I feel like I'm giving this whole unjust, horrible, painful sentence a purpose. And you can transfer that into any area of anybody's life. God forbid they get cancer and they use their journey to help somebody else. God forbid they have a sick child. People who homeschool their kids and they had to learn through mistakes. You can use what you learn to help other people and it gives your struggle a purpose. So I think that's what's going on here. And when that inmate said that, I believe that that was 100% genuine because I've gotten stopped at visits so many times I stopped counting by mothers, by other wives, by other family members, people who say your husband has saved my son's life, especially Adam had a thing back in the day for ki kids who needed a big brother. I'm gonna make myself cry. Kids who needed a father figure. And one time he even said it to me, don't cry girl, you're doing your makeup. Thank God we don't have lashes on yet. But he said to me, oof. He was helping this 18 year old kid that caught his case when he was in high school. Very unfair case, very high profile case. It did not have to be federal, but it, they came in and they did him dirty. So he was at very high risk inside and he wound up getting moved and going into the hole in protective custody after because unfortunately what Adam predicted would happen eventually did. But in the meantime, Adam took him under his wing and he told me at one point, I guess that was a taste of me, of fatherhood for me. Oh, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And it's so sweet. And I think that's a lot of the reason why we do what we do too is because the system took that opportunity away from us. So, oh girl, come on, you're doing your makeup. Hold on, let's stop talking for a second. Somebody talk about sunshine and roses. I'm not even gonna finish that thought, but you guys understand, like it's a beautiful thing. And it, I think that's why it helps too, is that it kind of helps you have a feel for fatherhood, you know, whatever, helping people, tipping the scales of justice, making amends for your wrongdoings, whatever it is, giving a purpose to your sentence, if you're innocent, whatever it is, I, you get it. But, ooh, we're gonna stop talking about it. I keep saying we're gonna stop talking about it, and I keep talking about it. This is the last thing, cause like I said, <laughs> I was gonna say, like I said, we're not gonna make this a long video, and we're at 43 minutes. I literally had to stop 
my SD card and start again because it can't hold more than 30 minutes on one video. And we're not even done with my eyes yet. I think I'm gonna use the Sequin Aura. Maybe I'll use the Metallic Aura. We'll get a little fancy today. That's what I'll use. The last thing that stood out to me on episode three, the brother says, I am so sorry that I was distant. I promise you, I will come see you. You wrote me a letter. I didn't know what to say back. And then by the time I was ready to write back, so much time had passed that I felt so guilty. I figured too much time had passed, so I just didn't write you back. And he said, I just thought it was too late. And the inmate brother looks at him all seriously and he said, it's never too late. And I, this one was so true, stood out to me so much. Every single person who has ever or will ever do time will have to deal with abandonment. Abandonment, that is like the hardest word to say. Every single person that has done time will experience people that fall by the wayside. A lot of people inside have nobody, family, friends, everybody, people who tell you, I'm not gonna leave you. Significant others that say, I would never leave your side. I'll be there throughout the whole entire bid. It's understandable with that, with romantic situations. I get it and I'm dedicated to a man inside and I, I don't blame women for having to move on. It's totally a personal thing. But in the situation where it's family, just know if you're watching this, and your family member is doing time, it's never too late to reach back out to them because they are so lonely in there and they're so used to not having anybody. Real quick, I'm just using the Ofra, Ofra, I don't know how to say that, but it's highlighter. This is one of my top faves. So it's never too late. People will hear, especially female inmates, I think female inmates kind of get the shortest end of the stick with this because it's in a woman's genetics to stick around. We're emotional creatures, right? So a lot of us do stick around for a bit. A lot of men, men are just naturally more physical creatures. And they're like, here's $20, I'll see you, if that. But usually it's, I'll see you when you get out. Just imagine being the person when it's mail call. So when the cops come to the block and they call everybody out to the rails, to the rails just means like there's literally railings around the tier. So they'll call it like standing on the rail or whatever. They'll come out to the rails and it just means outside of their cells. And the cops a lot of times do this on purpose to taunt people and they'll be like, Clawson and they'll hand him his mail and they'll be like, Johnson and they'll hand him his mail and they'll be like, White and they'll hand him his mail. And there are people that never, ever, ever hear their name at mail call. They don't have phone calls. They don't literally have anybody on the outside world because a lot of times, family members disappear. They just do. It's just, it is how it is. So putting a little bit of highlight on my nose, God bless us, this always, this could go hit or miss with me with my nose. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my lashes off camera. I'll show you the lashes that I'm using and I'll show you the glue that I use, but I'll do them off camera. I use the Christina 43s, you can get them real cheap. My favorite glue right now is the Duo, the green one. And then when I'm done with my lashes, we're gonna talk about the comment of, last week. I'm just going in and doing a little bit more, fixing the eyeliner on my waterline because I cried. I forgot to use this little, this is Benefit Gimme Brow just to keep the brows in place. It's kind of like a gel, it's a color gel. Usually I do this before I put my lashes on but I totally forgot. We're just gonna spray your face and set your makeup. Personally, I like to use my beauty blender and blot that because in the past, I've gotten makeup marks where the spray goes and it doesn't like settle right, doesn't dry right, so I just kind of blot it in, so, oops. So I don't have any issues with that, and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna read you the comment of the week while we do our, we'll do our mascara, sugar our lips, and then we'll be done. The comment of last week that I wanna review with you guys came through Instagram. If you guys don't follow us on Instagram, it's at Strong Prison Lives. Okay. I understand that people should share their views, but let's not forget this is a real man's life story. Conviction and torment. The writer and 50 Cent are breaking their own story on the injustice to life on screen. So how on earth is it gonna be debated if it's realistic or not? Let's put some respect on what this man went through and conquered. And I totally understand. I hear that, I feel that. Because last week I wrote, when I was sharing this last week's review video, is it realistic? And the only reason I put that is because I totally agree. This is all respect, all love. This man, Isaac Wright Jr., all respect. If I could meet that man and give him a hug, I would. He's using his experiences with his life sentence to help people, to teach people 
about the injustices of the system. I am doing the exact same thing in, to my platform on YouTube the way that I can, the way that I can reach you guys. I'm using my life sentence on the outside because we on the outside, according to the inmates on the inside and everybody else on the outside as well, do not let anybody tell you differently. We do time too. Sometimes our time in a different way is more difficult, although I would never trade it in the world ever with Adam, poor guy, sorry. But I use my experiences to teach and help people get through this. It is all done with respect. The only reason that I'm showing the differences in between what is realistic and what isn't in a hopefully it comes across respectful manner because I do not mean to disrespect anybody here. I have so much love and respect for people who overturn life sentences, who do their time in a constructive way, who help other inmates. It doesn't matter if it's self-serving or not. Who cares? It's mutually beneficial and he's making the best of his second chance. All love. I'm trying to just pave my way. Oh my God, why am I so emotional today? I'm trying to get Adam's story out there. And at the same time, I'm trying to use my experiences and what I've learned through this God awfully painful situation to help you guys. Hopefully you can use your experience to help teach people, to help people avoid the pain and the hardships of the past. And I guess that's become the theme of this video. Find strength from your struggle and use it in a way that's positive and then eventually you'll reap reward, whatever that reward is. If that's getting your loved one time back, if that's getting a pat on the back and knowing that you could get through a life or a death sentence with your head held high, girl, you do it. You do you. Just to add to that, I'm reviewing the show For Life which they say is loosely based off of a true story. I am not reviewing anything legal. I, I am not reviewing Isaac Wright Jr.'s case. There is a difference between the two. Okay, last thing, we're just gonna use a little bit of my Wet n Wild gloss today. I don't really want too much going on with my lips. This is 55 4B Bronze Berry. This Usually was helpful like for me because I kinda got a video in while I was getting ready and there really aren't enough hours in the day, but let me know your thoughts. What was your favorite part of this? I'm gonna pick a comment to showcase on next week's For Life Review. According to Wikipedia, there are only four episodes, so I will review again. If there are more, I might start lumping a few together just because I don't know if you guys are enjoying them or not. I don't get a lot of views on these For Life Review videos, so I thought it would be a way to teach you guys about the prison system, but you might not like it, and that's totally fine. I'm here to do whatever you guys need. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Okay, the next thing we're using is Sharp, Sharp, no. What the f***? What the f***? <laughs>